Hi, welcome to The Silver Key, a Lovecraft-based uh, game. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is point and click. Yep, I have an inventory that you can't see, and in it I have a letter and a gate key, which is, get this, silver. Okay, so front gate. Yes, Kyle's family is rich enough to have a front gate, and it's locked. Perfect. Oh, okay. Uh, the front door is not locked, but as soon as I enter, it locks itself shut. Odd. Also, this is a very odd flashlight you have here. Okay, okay. So I can go to the dining room. I can go upstairs on two locations. I can go to the living room. And then there's some stuff here that I can do. Lamp. No electricity. Uh, can't switch anything on right now. Okay, perfect. Books. History of Umbridge. I guess that means this house. Okay. Uh, this shelf is filled with history books about this house and the surrounding region. Nice and welcoming display for the front door. Not that we can see it, but it sure is welcoming. Um, we'll go to the living room first. Okay. I was not prepared to immediately get into this, by the way. Um, oh, bookshelf again. Uh, various books on European mythologies like Greek, Scandinavian, Gaelic, etc. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Kyle's whole family sure reads a lot. Yeah, yeah, sure do. Uh, one would think I should at least see something burning in this house, but even the fireplace is dead and cold. This is getting ironic. No, I don't think so. It, no. Now, this is strange. It's not reflecting anything. Not even my torchlight. Are we sure it's a mirror then? What is this? Radio. It's battery operated. But the batteries are dead, so I can't turn it on anyway. Fair enough. Uh, okay. To entrance. Yeah. Alright, uh, let's go to the living, I mean dining room then. Okay. Oh, to kitchen. We'll go there next. Painting. An old painting. An old painting of the front gate outside. That does not look like a front gate. This house has really been around a long time. That is a person. Interesting. To living room. Okay. Painting. A painting of this house during the day. I don't know. No, that looks like more people. It looks nothing gloomy like right now. I see. Okay, so to entrance. To living room. We've already been to the living room. So we'll go, we'll go to the kitchen. Back door. Nice. Uh, I clipped out a frame there for a second with my mouse. Flowers. I don't remember exactly how long it has been since Kyle's gone. But it should be long enough for these flowers to wilt by now. They're still going strong. Interesting. Sink. Wouldn't... Wouldn't be a rich house without, a, without the kitchen sink. No water coming out, though. Mm. Interesting. Cabinet. It's empty. Second cabinet. It's also empty. Third cabinet. It's empty. Fourth cabinet. It has a key. A gold key. Okay. Okay, to dining room. Back door. Locked, just like the front door. Gold key? No, it doesn't work. Gate key? That also doesn't work. That's fair. Oh, letter! I got this letter from Kyle sometime after he died. His front gate key was in it. The letter was brief. It only read, Retrieve the silver key. Gotcha. Understood. So I need to find a silver key. Gotcha. This is... Where was I? Dining room. Dining room. Okay, well, uh, let's go. Up. Oh, painting. It's a painting of a family I don't know. Um, the title reads, The Carters. Randolph Carter? That poor, poor bastard. Alright, upstairs now. Okay, we got the entrance. We got the grandfather clock. Bookshelf. Ah. Painting. Drawer. Okay, okay. Alright, let's look at the grandfather clock first. 
The clock is not electric and can be manually winded. If I can find the key to wind it, it'll be up. It'll operate again. I'm assuming that's this gold key. Oh no, that's his drawer key. Never mind. Bookshelf. The collections here are starting to look strange. Call of Cthulhu, Book of Blood, Mountain of Madness. Painting. I have nothing to say about the painting. It's like it doesn't even exist. Drawer. This wee sneaky drawer is a great place to lock up precious, important, small objects. Well, let's open it then. How sneaky. The clock winding key is there. Clock key into this one? To be continued. Okay, fair enough. Alright, fair enough. Yeah, it says to be continued. Thank you for playing the demo. Um... I don't think this project is continued though, this is quite a few years ago, so I think they stopped production on that. I didn't like it for what it was. Um, again, uh, a lot of games do the not a lot of explanation at the beginning, and you kind of have to figure out the story as you play the game, which I enjoy, but that's if you do it well. Uh, this game did it... Well, actually, now I'm thinking about it, I had the letter since the beginning, I just chose not to read it. It was only when I got in the house and I saw it was opened all of a sudden, like the, the picture of it changed to an open letter, that's when I read it. So I guess it's my fault. I would have had like at least the basic gist of, hey, Kyle's gone and I need to collect a silver key. So that's on me. That's actually not the game's fault. That That's my fault. Um... So ignoring that one fact I said, yeah, for two people, and and one of them, and Silver Branch just seems to be just the one that was making sure Rosa didn't kill herself working, kill themselves working on this game. Um, this was good. I like it a lot. Um, pity they didn't like continue on it, but you know, for what it was, it was good. And uh, I'll see you all in the next game. Um, you'll find out what it is when I get there. Alright, hello. Welcome to The Nameless. It's a uh, demo. And Lovecraft based again. I have no idea what it's about. And it's just white. The white screen. Okay, now it's a black screen. Now it's a game. It's pixelated. Hell yeah. Pixelated games... Fantastic. Ooh, I woke up from a bed, the classic waking up from a bed sequence. I guess not even waking up from a bed, just waking up. I can't crouch, I, I can sprint though. Oh man, I can sprint. I'm a fast boy. Chair, we got a lamp here, we got windows that don't really work. Perfect, that's all you need in life. Okay. Hells, yeah. Alrighty. Well. Wait, was there stuff I could do upstairs? Stuff I could open? Stuff like that? Because I, 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 didn't, I didn't check at all. Oh, John's not in his bed. Strange. My bed. I'm not tired. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I'm, I'm tired. I'm always tired, though. Inside of John's belongings, I don't want to intrude. Okay, okay, respect. Ah, here we go. I picked up a flashlight, that's useful. And my journal, that's also useful. January 12th, 1949. It's been three days since I've been on this island. It's just like I thought, lonely and mundane. But it doesn't bother me too much. I've always been sort of a loner, plus John's here. He may be an older fellow, but he's better company than most people my age. It's just based off the lighthouse. As for all the mundanity of it all, doing the same thing day in and day out can get tedious. I'm not surprised that the last few keepers it is, it's based off the lighthouse, who accompany John here all end up abandoning their posts, which is why I decided to keep a journal. Maybe this can add a, at least a small bit of excitement to this dreary place. 
Oh, buddy boy. Buddy, buddy boy. Okay. Okay, nothing in there that I can interact with. Perfect. Interact with anything over here. Nope. Anything in here? Nope. Anything in here? Nope. There's a door. Can I interact with the fire? That's a... Oh, okay, it just leads into the next room. It gets cold out here in the winter months. It's best to keep a fire burning. I'm gonna go over here. The toilet. I don't have to go right now. That's fire. I don't know why I'm talking like this. What the fuck? Who designed it like this? My god. Alrighty. Um, some firewood. Extra firewood. Our radio. Nothing to report right now. How echoey is my voice? Our radio. Nothing to report right now. A barrel full of oil. Because that's safe to keep in what looks like a mainly wooden house next to a fire. Intelligence was obviously not your all strong suit. Or at least common sense wasn't. But me too. Our logbook filled with information related to each call we make or receive, such as dates and call signs. That's wise to keep. Whoever's doing oh, that was the drawers. A radio, nothing to report right now. Is there anything over here? Well, it doesn't have this weird left door, it just has two, so I'm not sure why they made that little subsection there. You know? I mean, I get it, like, I guess in-game it's to make sure you don't know it's on the opposite side. A little bit of tense there, but like in real life, why? Why? I think the accent changed too, by the way. It just shifts rapidly. There's the lighthouse, as I suspected. I'm actually not going to go up the lighthouse, I'm going to go down to the dock. Why? Because fuck the lighthouse. I'm just going to leave a rowboat. I have no use for this right now. Never mind, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to go back up the lighthouse and I'm going to stop doing this voice. Because I just don't want to. Oh, the light's off. Where the hell's John? John's dead. I'm sorry, John. John's dead. Barrels of oil, oil, oil. A large staircase. Uh, canned foods and other miscellaneous things. Is it? Yeah, same, same deal, same deal, same deal. Step pity, step pity. All right, let's go up to the lighthouse. See what's what? Yo, it's Johnny Boy. John, the light's out. There's a ship out there. Yeah, okay, then you gotta turn the light on. Hold on. Dead in the water. I've been trying to reach them over the radio all night to no avail. You, uh, wha what should we do? We could take the robot out there, see if anyone needs help. Good idea. One of us should stay here with the radio, though. Right, you go. It's time I get this light back up and running anyway, especially in this fog. Yeah, how would I help you with that, mate? You know? It's like, is there a way I can just help you with that? No, I can't. Okay, cool. John, I'm counting on you. There's nothing else to talk about. I must get to our rowboat. John? John, if you leave me to die on the water, because without a light, without the shining light from the heavens themselves, I am not going to be able to find my way back, John. John. You are the only shining light I have in these dark and dreary times. You know? John. John, I implore you. I beg. I'm on my knees, John. Just for you. Please, light that. Seriously, John, light the damn light. Okay. I... Oh. Okay, okay, it's a cutscene. I thought I had to row it. I actually would prefer to row it. That would be more interesting than uh, just watching a cutscene for it. Maybe it was too hard to animate, though. 
No, that can't be it. They seem to be doing it just fine here. This is like gameplay camera. Maybe they didn't want players to have that much exploration because it's an ocean, so it's very vast. Interesting, but there's probably ways or, that you could do around that. But I mean, fair enough. Cutscenes, cutscenes, easiest. Oh, this is a, it's a big old boat. This is a hefty boat, ain't it? Okay, it's not, it's not that big. Actually, now I'm looking at it. It's like it's big, but it's like. Not that big. Press E to board. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I can go inside, but I'll do that later. Need to explore the outside first. Be very thorough. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then opening to do something, I don't know. And I can't go up to the crow's nest, and I can't do anything with these guys. Yet, at least, so. Well, fair enough. Okay. Sprint, 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 sprint. Perfect, let's go in. Let's see what's up. Alrighty. Um, well... Let's... It's locked. The sign there reads Captain's Room. Alright, well that sounds like I need to find a key. Ooh, downstairs. Okay, okay. Let's see if I can get in here first. Door is locked. The keyhole is decorated with a silver finish. Okay, okay. So let's go downstairs first before going upstairs. It won't budge. There's some kind of device next to the door for hand... Fingerprints, not handprints. Well, maybe also palm. Is involved. I'm just poopy noises. Oh, I can get that. That's the electricity. Oh, the fuse box looks like one of the fuses is missing. Okay, so I gotta find two keys. Captain's room, silver, silver fit, a key. And then a foos. What's that? I can't freaking. I have a flashlight. I forgot I picked that up. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, that's a bottle of beer. Or ketchup. I don't know which. Well, I mean, they're probably not bottles of ketchup. They could be, though. I don't know. Maybe someone here likes to drink ketchup. I don't know. Or maybe it's just extra ketchup they keep just in case they got some french fries. Well, there seems to be a dead body here. The blanket is covered in blood. I'd rather not look underneath, you pussy. Wimp. Open it. Books! A stack of books. None of them are important. How do you know? You haven't even looked at them. Okay, you looked at them, but you didn't, like, look that hard. You just kind of glanced at them, and you're like, nah, they're just books. Bro, can you not do that? I thought I saw something at the corner of my eye. Yo, it's a note. Crewman's diary. I resent the fact that the captain agreed to chauffeur around these so-called researchers. He even had a small laboratory installed before the voyage. These people are truly pressing their luck with the strange things they pull off the ocean floor. We aren't meant to be down here. There's a reason God didn't give us, didn't give man gills. Okay. But I mean, he did give us the capacity to think and reason and like go down there. So, I mean, your argument's valid. But also, I don't know. He didn't want us to go down there. He should probably have made it so we couldn't physically go down there. My heart jumped. Oh. Well. Oh, this is the most useless flashlight I've ever seen in my life. 
I thought it was gonna be a better one, but no, it's one. It's one of those flashlights, where it works within like a five foot radius. It's locked from the other side. Okay. Okay. Well, sounds like I'm done down here then. Maybe there's one more door over here. Okay, I can't get in through here. Perfect. Ooh. The door is locked. The keyhole is decorated with a silver finish. Ugh. The door is locked with a gold finish. Don't I have that key? Is there like inventory? I don't care. Okay. Heal. I guess. Oh, no, no, I have a bronze key. Oh, that was the bronze key door, I bet. Okay, okay. Can't open that. Okay, understandable. Oh, uh, what's this? Researcher's notes. After months of failed expeditions, our last journey to the ocean floor yielded some in interesting new specimens. I almost said impressive. Their anatomy somewhat resembles that of a squid. Also, their intelligence seems to be off the charts. I'm looking forward to continuing experimentations in the coming days. That's not good. Really smart squids. That's not good. The only thing that could be worse is if there is some sort of parasitic organism that would latch onto your face. You know? Like a, like a face hugger. The handle's missing. That's weird. You know? It's like a squid, and yet it's also, because it's a squid, it's already similar enough to a face hugger. And it just latches onto your head, and then it eats your head, and then it becomes your head. Like the like the one in like the one parasite that does that to a fish's tongue, where it just like eats the tongue and then becomes the tongue. You know? You know which one I'm talking about? You know. You know the one. You know the one. Probably. I don't know. I unlocked it. Yay. Ooh, not yay. Ooh. Oh, it's cafeteria. Okay, acceptable. Okay. Okay, there's a shiny over there. Okay, let me go look at their shiny. Oh, it's the foods. Perfect. It's locked from the other side. Well, fucking Christ. Hey, how do you get in here? How did you get here? I'm sorry, I thought something was wrong. Never mind that. How did you get here? Do you have a boat? Yes, it's tied up below. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Now, hold on. What exactly is going on here, mister? There's no time to explain. Great game. Shit, they found us. Wait, no. It is a face hugger squid. Wow. The Nameless. Is that it? Thanks for playing the demo. Is that it? How many rooms did I miss? And don't forget to wish list on Steam. Okay. Also, you need to fix your text. It's like readable, but it's not super readable. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that one as is. Because it's a three scary... I, you know, I'm not gonna go in and like... What did I miss? I'll see if this is actually like fully out later, but um, on to the third game. How's it going? Welcome to the Statement of Randolph Carter, based on the short story, The Statement of Randolph Carter, by H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, I'll look at preferences, which I put- My name is Randolph Carter. The weird studies of Harley Warren are well known to me, and to some extent shared by me. I have for five years been his closest friend, and a partial share of his terrible researches into the unknown. Of his vast collection of strange, rare books on forbidden subjects, I have read all that are written in the languages of which I am master, but these are few as compared with those in languages I cannot understand. Warren always dominated me. Kinky. And sometimes I feared him. I shuddered at his facial expressions. When one night he talked of his theory, 
why certain corpses never decay, but rest firm and fat in their tombs for thousands of years. Oh, for a thousand years. Well, mine, mine was more dramatic. It was his intention to find proof of this theory, and he wished for my assistance. Of course I'm going to go with Warren. I know how this story ends. And I want to be involved. At half past eleven, Warren and I were on the Gainesville Pike, headed for Big Cypress Swamp. At length we came to our destination. The place was an old cemetery, so ancient that I trembled at the manifold signs of immemorial years. It was in a deep, damp hollow, overgrown with rank grass, moss, and curious creeping weeds and filled with a vague stench which my idle fancy associated absurdly with rotting stone. I paused with Warren before a certain half-obliterated sepulchre, and we threw down our burdens. I had with me an electric lantern and two spades, whilst my companion was supplied with a similar lantern and a portable telephone outfit. Without delay, we seized our spades and commenced to clear away the grass, weeds, and drifted earth from the flat, archaic mortuary. After uncovering the surface, we stepped back some distance to survey the charnel scene. Carnal? Carnal scene. I'm an idiot. The carnal scene. And Warren appeared to make some mental calculations. Charnel scene. Who the fuck says charnel? Then he returned to the sepulcher, and using his spade as a, as a lever or lever, sought to pry out the slab nearest to a stony ruin which may have been a monument in its day. He did not succeed, and motioned to me to come to his assistance. Of course I am helping him. I am never going to refuse my good man Warren. He's my homeboy. He's, he dominates me, and I like it. Mm. Finally, our combined strength loosened the stone, which we tipped to one side. The removal of the slab revealed a black aperture from which rushed an effluence of miasmal gases so nauseous that we started back in horror. After an interval, however, we approached the pit again and found the exhalations less unbearable. Our lanterns disclosed the top of a flight of stone steps dripping with some detestable ichor of the inner earth and bordered by moist walls and crusted with night, night, nitre, nitre, <laughs> and then Warren addressed me at length in his mellow tenor voice, a voice singularly unperturbed by our awesome surroundings. Sorry to have to ask you to stay on the surface, but it would be a crime to let anyone with your frail nerves to go down there. You can't imagine, even from what you have read and from what I've told you, the things that I shall have to see and do. It's fiendish work, Carter, and I doubt if any man without ironclad sensibilities could ever see it through and come up alive and sane. But you're gonna do neither. I don't wish to offend you, and heaven knows I'd be glad enough to have you with me, but the responsibility is a certain sense mine, and I couldn't drag a bundle of nerves like you down to probable death or madness. I tell you, you can't imagine what that thing is really like, but I promise to keep you informed over the telephone of every move. You see, I have enough wires here to reach to the center of the earth and back. You're going further. Warren should not go alone. You need to go down there. Okay, well, both of these are saying Warren is not going to go alone. What? I guess, I guess this one, because this one explicitly says Warren should not go alone, but this one's like, hey, maybe I'm talking to Warren. Like, hey, you need to go, Warren. Naughty boy. Please, Warren, I must go with you. Carter, I am adamant. My mind will not be changed on this point. But Warren, please. Carter, if you continue to insist, I'm afraid that I will have to abandon this expedition. I could not allow someone with your frail nerves to accompany me. 
After he had secured my reluctant acquiescence in his design, Warren picked up the reel of wire and adjusted the instruments. At his nod, I took one of the telephones and seated myself upon an aged, discolored gravestone close by the newly uncovered aperture. Then he shook my hand, shouldered the coil of wire, and disappeared within the indescribable ossuary. For a moment I kept sight of the glow of his lantern, and heard the rustle of wire as he laid it down after him. The glow soon disappeared abruptly, as if a turn in the stone staircase had been encountered, and the sound died away almost as quickly. I was alone. In the lone silence of that hoary and deserted city of the dead, my mind conceived of the most ghastly fantasies and illusions, and the grotesque shrines and monoliths seemed to assume a hideous personality, a half-sentience. Amorphous shadows seemed to lurk in the darker recesses of the weed-choked hollow, and to flit as in some blasphemous ceremonial procession past the portals of the moldering tombs in the hillside, shadows which could not have been cast by that of pallid, peering crescent moon. I listened with feverish, and feverish anxiety at the receiver of the telephone, but for more than a quarter of an hour, heard nothing. Didn't he say he would, like, inform me? Then a faint clicking came from the instrument, and I called down to my friend in a tense voice. Warren! I don't know what sound it's... Well, I guess it's making that sound, so never mind, I'm an idiot. He then responded in a shaky whisper, more pretentious than the loudest shriek. God, if you could... no. Nope. God! Yes, that's not I. Um, he, he, in a portentous whisper. Whisper. That's not it. God, if you could see what I'm seeing. Murder, it's terrible. Monster is unbelievable. Warren, what is it? What is it? I can't tell you, Carter. It's too utterly beyond thought. I dare not tell you. No man could know it and live. Great God. I never dreamed of this. What is it? What, what have you... What have you... <laughs> beat it. For God's sake, put back the slab and beat it, Carter. Warren, brace up. I'm coming down. Don't. You can't understand. It's too late and my own fault. Put back the slab and run. There's nothing else you or anyone can do now. I tried not to heed him. I tried to break through the paralysis which held me and to fulfill my vow to rush down to his aid. But his next whisper found me still held inert in the chains of stark horror. Was, oh, was he whispering that whole time? Quick. Before it's too late. That was the word pretentious mean. Caster. But Caster. Yes, Caster. Yes, this is now Fate's Day night. Caster, hurry. Carter, hurry. It's no use. You must go. Better one than two. The slab. <coughs> Nearly over now. Don't <coughs> make out her. <coughs> Cover up those damn steps for your life. <coughs> You're losing time. Brr. So long, Carter. Brr. Won't see you again. Hershey's Hallerstein's. Brr. Legion's. Brr. My God, beat it. Beat it. Beat it. Just beat it. Warren, Warren, answer me. Are you there? Warren, are you there? Warren. Oh, I don't know what the voice this is, so I'm just going to use mine. You fool, Warren is dead. Oh no! I heard this and knew no more, until I woke up in the hospital days later. Original ending. Yay! Yeah, I just followed the story. Okay. Oh, we have, I have enough time to, um... Thank you for playing. Feel free to give us... Yeah, I have enough time to just kind of pop in here and be like, Hey, my name is Randolph Carter. I've read books. He dominates me. I like it when I'm dominated. I refuse. Warren continues to be a station from Aladdin. Well, I, I understand. 
Our studies have been difficult for you. An expedition such as this would be too much for your frail nerves. I can find someone else to assist me. That was the last time I ever spoke to him. A few days later, I was visited by the authorities. They informed me that Warren had disappeared mysteriously. He was never seen again. The end. Whoa! Whoa! Can I just load game into the... No, I can't. Bo... Well, that's fair. Main menu! Yeah, man. Here, start game. Oh, yeah, go with Warren. Blam. 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 Maybe this isn't a good idea, man. I hesitated, fearing what would be beyond that slab, but the look in Warren's eyes spurred me to help him. Oh. Oh. Okay. Maybe, um... Surely, Warren, you should not have to face this alone. Okay. Yeah, that's... Okay. And then it's just... There's just... The rest of it? Yeah. Um, I'm doing some real fast ticking. You might be able to hear it. You're probably gonna be able to hear it. Yeah, okay. Okay. Alrighty. That was good. I like that. It was literally... Um, I, I think a lot of those lines, if not all of them, were taken just from the short story itself. Just picked out of it. Um... I'd have to read the short story again, but I, I, I think it was literally just a, um, yeah, they took the story and then, um, made it interactive, um, with adding a few choices here and there for dialogue options and, uh, more visual elements as well, which was nice. So, yeah, I enjoyed that. Um, so yeah, that was three scary, these three spoopy games, as I call it. Mainly because I'm an idiot. Even though I always say three scary games. It's called three spoopy games. But yeah, that was three spoopy games. Uh, Lovecraft edition. And I, uh... Hope you had fun watching them. I had fun playing them. And I probably had fun editing. I don't know yet. I haven't started. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.